What would you really be focusing on if you were running a major label today? Okay, I, that's a real, God, that's a really good and long question to answer. I, you know, two things, I think. I mean, well, listen, I'm looking look at it this way. I mean, I think the interesting thing is if you just say like, there's a blank piece of paper and you want to construct a music company for the 21st century, um, I think we'd have to find a way of how do you build a profitable business uh, by working with artists at whatever stage in the career they have to be. Um, how can you cater to those middle tier artists and say that which you're not going to lose your shirt and you provide a service. So you have to figure out you're going from a rights ownership to an artist service business. Um, and so I'd make sure that the skill set of that company really understood how to incubate talent really understood sort of the, the needs and requirements of artists at middle tier to sustain their careers. And then had the scale and the reach and the muscle to be able to pro provide that kind of, as I said, that big global marketing reach when it comes to global superstar releases. But it's been, it's to build a viable business at every stage of that artist uh, evolution. And the other side of it is, is, you know, on my very small way is, you know, you know, we get involved with artists at a very, very early stage. You know, I always call it pre-data. Um, and because we take that risk, uh, we do get a share of the assets that we invest in. But our deals are invariably short term. So we don't tie artists up to a long, long term contract. And I actually think that's kind of the future. So artists need to stay in business because of the quality of service and the relationship you've built, as opposed to we have a contract that says we're in business. And it's much more looking, I think, at the artist community as like, look, we're partners as opposed to rights owners. So that's one way of obviously doing it. And, and again, making sure that the skill set in that business is totally geared to the needs and requirements of artists in this current day and age. The other side of it, if you were looking on a different level saying, okay, I'm going to acquire a major, there's a huge amount of duplication within major music companies. So, and it's built that way. I mean, if you look at a company like Universal in the US, you've got, you know, four fully staffed, full blown recording music companies, all largely doing the same thing and competing. They're not only competing for artists, they're also competing for radio slots, they're competing for Spotify love, they're competing. Uh, and I particularly look at, <coughs> you know, if you look in America as an example, you know, radio was always the driving force. You needed radio to really to drive music. And radio now is not what it used to be. Streaming is what's driving, you know, a, it drives consumption, it drives, it, that's where the business is. Radio often comes after that. It still has a value to play, but it's nothing like the driving force it used to be. So why do you have four full-blown companies with full-blown national radio stars? So you kind of go, does it really make sense? Why is that? It's because it's legacy. It's the way it's, it's the way it's been built. So I think you could easily argue that you know, with a black piece of paper is I've got this incredible catalog, but I want to build expertise within this business. We're going to have other label names right now, but at least I build expertise in, you know, um, you know, I have great expertise in hip hop marketing and digital understanding and audience understanding. I've got great expertise in rock and pop and various genres in there. And that's how I'm building my hubs around this business. But I can plug into a phenomenal distribution machine. Um, and you know what? We'll have one national radio team to service all these various, you know, centers of expertise around these particular genres. Uh, and then sitting somewhere in the center of that, you've got you know, a, a global marketing capability that once, once you, the spark has been created, goes right, bang, we know how to really knock this out. You wouldn't, you wouldn't fancy building that then, Nick? <laughs> Where, yeah, okay. Someone just needs, like, someone's ponying up a few hundred million, I'm, I'm, <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm there. <laughs>